Hey Familia Igni here. Tons of new Chrono Genesis cards have been revealed over the past week, so let's go ahead and take a bit of a gander at them, and I'll give my first impressions of them. So, first of all, Furious Elder Weedman. Yes, that is actually the name. Dude Lamau, etc, etc. It's a 2.21 for Forest. It gives plus 1, plus 0 to another allied Forestcraft follower. Very reminiscent of sword cards and that buff other Swordcraft followers that we've seen, like Palace Fencer. Uh, definitely a tool for the token aggro forest style deck uh, in rotation, which is happening when this expansion comes out. Uh, I don't know how effective that deck will be when, you know, stuff like Roach and Lysa and Fairy Circle are rotating out, so we'll see, but definitely a card that potentially has a use in that kind of style of deck, uh, a role player in that, uh, pushing more damage to face for a very aggressive play style. So watch out for this one when uh, more early game Forcecraft cards are revealed, either in this expansion or in the future, because it may very well be one of the cards that makes it into that style of list. Marion, Fierce Dragon Newt. Dragoncraft card, 2 play point two two transform a Dragoncraft card in your hand into a Blazing Breath. I actually freaking like this card a lot. This card is great. On Brixia, if you're playing a, a ramp list or, or a late game list, and you're going up against some pretty heavy aggro, you can play this, play this guy, I think. And uh, get, a, get a Blazing Breath uh, and, you know, debrick your hand a little bit and have more tools for removal uh, to get you to the late game that you so definitely need to, to get to. So this card is great, I think. I really like it, especially in rotation when there's less things to choose from. Uh, this can definitely be a card that makes it into a lot of lists for Dragon uh, because a lot of the time you do need that removal to, to get you to the late game uh, instead of brick in, especially when there's going to be... Uh, Potentially less ramp with loss of Aila in rotation. Bone Bug, 2 play point, 1 3 for Shadow. Whenever another follower is destroyed, restore one defense to your leader. I think this card is actually definitely playable. It's also very, very cute. I mean, look at, look at the thing. It's adorable. <laughs> but <laughs> the thing is definitely playable. It's kind of like a mini Soul Eater. I don't know if you guys remember the card Soul Eater, but it's kind of like that. And uh, it's, it's a defensive 2 drop that isn't super easily removed. You can stick on board for a little bit. You can trade your other guys into their things. And, uh, you know, do other stuff that also synergizes with followers getting destroyed or allied followers getting destroyed while keeping yourself alive in the process. I think this card works fine. It's not going to be like a superstar or anything, but it's definitely a tool that Shadow can use. The stat line is great, too, just because three health is a lot of health. And we've seen that from stuff like Urius. This is kind of like the anti-Urius. Cute little guy and definitely playable. Diabolus Pesema, Bloodcraft Legendary, 9 play point six seven. With a fanfare, put Demonic Storm and Demonic Strike into your hand. If Vengeance is active for you, recover six play points. This follower can't be damaged by spells. So it looks like one of the main themes of Bloodcraft, this expansion, is restoring play points if you're in Vengeance. Which I think is a lot healthier than play point reduction of cards. Because it requires you to at least have the nine play points in the first place. So you can't cheat stuff out super early. That just makes an entirely ridiculous board state very early on. So this I like better, design-wise. Uh, in terms of how good it actually is, it's a really late game drop that gets you a lot of value. Um, so if you, you're in Vengeance and you drop this, you can play this plus the Demonic Storm, which is a 9.67 that deals 3 to all other uh, things, <laughs> you know, followers and leaders. So Fafnir is crying a little bit. Um, but right now, matched up against a lot of other late game options, especially in Unlimited, it seems really slow. Maybe in rotation, and they even mentioned this in the IGN article in which it was revealed um, that they might use this opportunity to sort of rebalance the, the format of rotation, you know, try and slow it down. It also just has combo potential where you can play it, get the six play points, and play something else. It doesn't have to be the Demonic Storm plus the Demonic Strike in your hand or anything like that. You can just play whatever card in your hand. So it has combo potential that way. But right now, compared to other, you know, late game drops in the game uh, and Unlimited, and even in rotation once this expansion was out, because Bahamas not rotated yet. So you have Bahamut available. It's kind of slow. Um, but in the future, who knows, this might very well be something powerful to watch out for. Reach of the Archdemon, six play point spell. Deal three damage to all followers. If Vengeance is active for you, recover three play points. So it can just be three play point, deal three to all. It's not quite Revelation, but again, keeping in mind rotation, this could very well see play in rotation. Uh, and Unlimited, it of course, has to compete with Revelation, so... You know, who knows what the viability there, but uh, even in Unlimited, think about card redundancy is really good for, uh, for deck building. So if you have 
multiple cards that do similar effects. It makes your deck more consistent a lot of the time. So it could still see play there. I think it's a solid card that, um, you know, it removes things. It's not quite a Themis, is it? But it can also be like a three play point remove most things, which is better than Themis. So, you know, there you go. Especially since Belphegor is still in the format uh, to allow you to get to Vengeance, Blood Moon as well. Um, and have the effect of this proc really easy. Blood Drinker's Brand, Bronze Bloodcraft spell, deal 4 damage to a follower, give it Drain if it's a Bloodcraft follower. If Vengeance is active for you, recover 2 play points. This is a really strange card. It's kind of like a worse Diabolic Drain in a way. So, if you're in Vengeance, it costs 1, basically. Because you pay 3, and then you get 2 back. And it deals 4 damage, so Blood now has a lot of things that deal 4 damage. You got this, you got D-Drain, you got um, the new Serpent card, uh, that also does 4 damage. The weird part about this card is give it Drain if it's a Bloodcraft follower. Flexibility is good, but it feels like that effect is really niche, and often you won't want to spend your own resources damaging your own thing so that you can recover health. But, you know, it could come into play. It just seems sort of weird. <laughs> Especially, the funny part is if you go against another Blood, it also gives their stuff Drain, so... I think most likely you're going to be using this just to kill off guys, rather than giving the Drain effect, but, you know, versatility is fine. And again, in Unlimited, it could also act as just redundant effects, dealing 4 damage for 3. I think it's more balanced than D-Train is, which I like. And hopefully Rotation moves towards this more balanced style of, of design, which is what the hope is, which is why cards like Blood Drinker's Brand and Reach of the Archdemon and Diabolus Pesema, Diabolus Pesema, Diabolus Sema, Diab... Di whatever. <laughs> I think that's why these cards are printed. Because the goal is that over time, hopefully, in rotation, the power levels are going to be uh, reworked. Ancient Protector for Havencraft. It's a gold amulet. Four play points. Count down one. So that's your next turn. Fanfare, summon a Heaven's Golem. Last words, destroy all allied Heaven's Golems. And Heaven's Golem is a 6-6 six, six with ward can't attack. And evolve, banish an amulet, can't attack. So the idea is that you'd banish the amulet that it came from. So they get a 4 play point 6 6 with Ward, which is not a terrible deal, actually. Is it better than other 4 play point tempo swing cards that on the draw players need? Uh, maybe not, because it only does deal with one thing. But you know what? A big body with Ward isn't bad either. And the funny thing is that it can deal with amulets and not just, you know, banish thing it came from, but instead just banish the amulet that your opponent has. Uh, what's weird about it is that a lot of the time the amulets that you want to banish belong to Haven, and this is a Haven card, so it's kind of like a, a Kaguya Aegis situation like back in the day. But you know what? I think this card is pretty well designed. It's just as a 4 play point 6 6 with Ward, it's kind of just like a more expensive ice form, does the same thing. Um, but the fact that it can also act as amulet removal, or banishing your own amulet and getting a 6 6 that can attack and has Ward just as a defensive body, I think this card is pretty versatile and could see play uh how good it is compared to other options that you need to evolve uh not so sure if amulets become really big then this could definitely see play as amulet removal we got a ton of different portal craft cards as well released this week a lot of them revolving around the puppet token so this is going to be another uh, mechanic of portal craft it's a token zero cost one one with rush at the end of your opponent's turn destroy this follower it's not an artifact so look at the trait there it's blank but Looks like Portal Craft is going to revolve around Resonance, Artifacts, and now Puppets. So let's have a look at some of these Puppet Synergy cards. So Mass Puppet, 5.22, which puts a Puppet into your hand for Portal Craft. And now my Puppet is destroyed, gain plus one, plus one. So it's kind of like Shadow Reaper in a way. Um, it definitely works best if you already have multiple Puppets in your hand before this point. Because on five playing this plus a Puppet, not great, is it? It's basically a five play point four four in a way. With one one being rush damage, you can run in and try and control. Over two bodies, so it's not the worst, but it's also definitely not good. Uh, I think this, uh, this card definitely works best with more puppet stuff. Again, it's just kind of hard to judge like how good this mechanic exactly is going to be, because we've never seen it before. We've never seen anything Portal Craft before, so that's why Portal Craft cards are hard to evaluate, but if puppets end up being a thing, this could be a role player, but the really low base stat line makes me a bit suspicious. We'll just have to see about what other tools Portal Craft gets regarding puppets. And speaking of puppets, let's talk about other puppet cards that were revealed such as Puppeteer Strings. Put two puppets into your hand, deal one damage to all enemy followers. So it's kind of like an angelic barrage that puts puppets into your hand. You can do a four play point, one damage to everything, plus two targeted damage with the puppets, because they have Rush. So 
that's not terrible. Um, I think a lot of the time, though, you want to be saving your puppets as Portal Craft to, you know, buff the puppets, which is um, something that a lot of the other puppet cards seem to want to do. And in that vein, if you want to save your puppets, you don't really want to be playing a four play point deal one damage to all enemy followers. Um, but as a puppet generator in a puppet deck, this is definitely one that makes a lot of puppets. So if puppets are good, this could be good. Portal Craft's cards are very weird to evaluate. Uh, let's take a look at more puppets. Automaton Soldier, 5 play point, 4, 3. Put a puppet into your hand, give plus 0, plus 1, and ward to all puppets in your hand. See, that, that's what I'm talking about. You want to keep the puppets so you can buff them. I think this card is probably better than the 5 play point, 2, 2 bronze. Just because it also puts the puppet into your hand, and it gives them ward. Which is probably more valuable than having this abysmal body that starts off and gets bigger over time with trading all your puppets in. Because most of the time, it feels like you want to be keeping your puppets, so... I'd probably, first impressions, rate a Tomcon Soldier over that other guy, the Mass Puppet. You get, like, a board of wards, which is good. Especially in rotation when there's going to be less board clear. Like, Themis is out, for example, so... There's that. Uh, one thing that's sad is that if you got Hungering Horde <laughs> and, uh... You can kill a lot of puppets that way from Automaton Soldier, but... Yeah, I kind of like the design of this one, because this is the way the puppets are worded, and that they banish at the end of your opponent's turn. The fact that this gives them ward can actually be pretty valuable. So finally, Vengeful Puppeteer Noah, 9 play point three six Storm. Fanfare, put a puppet into your hand. Give plus one, plus O, oh, and Storm to all puppets in your hand. So this is like the big puppet payoff card. And you know what? It's pretty dang good. So like the max damage you can get off this thing is, say, say 9 play point three six Storm, not great, right? Then it gives you a puppet, so that's two damage again, because it has Storm now. That's five. And then if you have three more puppets, that's six more damage, which is 11 damage on turn nine. Which is not too shabby, you know? Not too shabby at all. Uh, so this is why I was saying, like, you probably want to keep your puppets. And if you also have Ward on them from the Automaton guy, uh, at least on some of them, you can also try and keep Noah alive one more turn to keep doing more damage over time. Of course, there are board removals, but again, in rotation, there are going to be less. So, you know what? This card seems all right. Again, it depends on how good Puppet Archetype is. But if Puppet Archetype is good, this seems like a likely payoff for that kind of deck. So that's it for the Puppet cards, but there are more cards to go through. Morton the Manipulator, a new Portal Crafts card. 4 play point three three gold. It's a vanilla 3-3 three three unevolved, which is very bad. But evolved, banish an enemy follower that costs two play points or less, and then put a copy of that follower into play as an allied follower. I've seen some people pretty down on this card. I think this card works fine, and I really like how it's designed. Uh, it works infinitely better if you're going second than if you're going first, which is cool. And uh, it kind of stops board flood aggro in its tracks. So you take their stuff, you have a 3-3 body that you can trade into their other thing, and um, that's a huge tempo swing, like a really huge tempo swing. It doesn't summon the follower that you banish in its evolved form, I don't think. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, but I think in that case, it would be very, 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 very good. Right now, it just seems like regular good. I think it's made to counter this very specific kind of deck, and it does it well. So, you know, I think this card works fine. So if, you're th if there's a lot of board flood aggro, just put more than the manipulator in there and turn the tides your way. Finally, a couple more cards were revealed on Pocket Gamer here, so let's take a look. Happy Pig, 2 play points, 2-2, two, two, neutral, bronze. Last word, restore 1 defense to your leader. And when you evolve it, it restores 3 defense to your leader. Okay. This card seems like a 2-drop, two 2-2. Two, two. So, we need those, since a lot of those are rotating out in rotation. Uh, I think it's playable in defensive style decks, just because 3 health is a lot of health when you evolve it. Uh, is it worth evolving Happy Pig over anything else? I'm not sold. But, you know what? I'm not down on it. Like. I don't hate it. I don't think it's the worst card in the world. I don't think it's the best card in the world by any means, but I can see a world where this is played. And the art is great, so, you know, people might just play it for that reason, because it does look absolutely adorable. But most of the time, it seems like it'll be a little better than a 2 play point two two vanilla follower, so, you know, I don't see it really making it into the more refined list. Homebound Mercenary, 2 play point two two for a sword that, at the end of the turn, restore one defense to this follower, Enhance 4, gain plus 1, plus 2. So it's either a default 2 drop or a default 4 drop with the very niche added benefit of restoring 1 defense to it at the end of your turn. Uh, I don't see this being all that useful. It seems more like a card that is printed because a lot of 2 drops are being lost in the rotation and Sword needs 2 drops to fill that gap in the new format. Um, 
it works great in that it can trade down and restore health. But, you know, that's not exactly a primo effect, is it? So, uh, don't really see this one being that effective, but it might be run out of necessity. Grand Summoning! Gold Rune Card. It's a spell. Earthright, give plus one, plus oh to all allied followers, including followers summoned by this card. And the effect is, summon a Guardian Golem, a Clay Golem, and a Scrap Golem. This card seems pretty good. It's an army and a can card. Army and a can is good. Uh, lots of value, lots of value. And you can also buff your board with this. You know, it seems... Seems pretty great, especially when it summons the Guardian Golem first, the Clay Golem next, and the Scrap Golem after. Seems pretty good. Uh, it's not as good as ca Card Knights, I don't think, like by a lot, but this is good value. And definitely could see it played in a, in a more linear Rune Earthright deck, like a mid-range Earthright maybe. Um, you know. In general, when a card does more than it costs, uh, it seems like... It's probably going to see play, so I would look out for this one. Finally, last card of the day, Stormborn Wings, one playpoint Dragoncraft Bronze Spell. With the ability, give a follower Storm. Wait. With the ability, transform a follower into a Wind Blast Dragon. Wait. With the ability, transform a Dragoncraft card in your hand into a Wind Blast Dragon. In case anybody was confused, when this card first came up, it came up mistranslated. And then it became mistranslated again, and finally we have the real effect here, so there you go. Ah, miscommunications aside, I think this card works fine. You know, it's another one of those things that unbricks you. It's kind of like Marion, the dragon that we looked at earlier. If you want to go fast, play Stormborn Wings, get a freaking Storm card to hit them in the face later. Plus it costs one play point, so you can squeeze it in real nice into your curve. So I see this card seeing play, actually. Plus it kind of has a spirit of Fort, right? Because it gives you a Windblast Dragon, which is a 6 play point five five Storm, I believe. So, it's like Fort. You know, 5 attack, 6 play point storm. Even though Ford is being rotated out to Unlimited, we have Stormborn Rings now, which fits in with this new theme of transforming cards in your hand for Dragon. So Stormborn Wings, look out for that. Storm is a good mechanic, uh, you know, because you can hit face. So uh, any card with Storm I would be wary of, including this one. So that's it for the reveals this week. I will be doing the same thing next week for that week of reveals and so on and so forth until Chronogenesis finally comes out at the tail end of this month. Let me know what you thought of the cards in the comments below. Was I right on some of them? Was I wrong on some of them? What did I miss? Let's have a discussion in the comments. Now before you head off, I want to let you know that my regularly scheduled stream this Sunday is not going to be happening because I will be casting the English stream of the Rage Winter Finals, which is going to be at 9.30 JST, so convert that into your time zone, at uh, twitch.tv slash NGE. So tune in for that, watch me cast some competitive Shadowverse. It'll be a fun time. That's it for this video. Like it if you did. Don't if you didn't. Subscribe for more Shadowverse content in the very near future. And of course, thank you to my wonderful patrons. Patreon.com slash Ignidius if you'd like to support the channel as well. I would highly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.